Let's give him praise today. Oh, we love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Amen. It's good to be in God's house today. Amen. In the middle of all the chaos and all the crazy, it's good to be able to walk in and feel the peace that passes understanding. Amen. Amen. And the good word of God and, and the spirit of prayer and a spirit of worship, it's good to serve a prayer answering God. And God answers prayer this morning. He hears your prayers. He hears my prayers. I'm just glad to be in his house. Amen. I want to thank everybody that helped us out this week. There were people who brought over taco salad. God bless them. And people who brought over okra. God double bless them. A little olive oil, salt and pepper. And my, my, my. God has been good. <laughs> So thank you. Thank you for everybody that has been so gracious and kind. Uh, it's good to see my friends Ben and Yee in church this morning. Amen. Y'all said y'all were going to try to make it in, and I'm glad you found your way and are able to join us. So we're so happy you came to the house of God this morning. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. It's good to feel the presence of God. Good to, to just believe that God's going to do something great today. How many believe that? I hope you didn't come to take a nap this morning and kind of just sleepwalk through church, but I just believe God's going to touch somebody with the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. And I want to preach this gospel, and, and I think God has something in store for us. So if you have a Bible, open it with me to the book of 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter 5. Spanish, it's Segunda Reye, capítulo 5 y versículo 11, verse 11, chapter 5, verse 11. And let's read. But Naaman was wroth and went away and said, Behold, I thought he will surely come out to me. And stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. Are not Abana and Farpar, rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. Amen. Angry about the fact that he had to wash in this river, the River Jordan. And this morning I want to take a few moments and I want to talk to you about the importance of this river. The importance of of this river. Look at the person next to you, tell them, I want to be in the right river. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. I've been looking at rivers in Scripture as of late and waters. And it has a way of coming out in your preaching, and it's been popping out here and there. I just wanted to take this morning and just focus on it. As I wrestled before church about what to preach and what God had for me to deliver, um, I'll say at the outset that that. It is important that we find our way in the spirit to a river. 
This service this morning is not just anything. It's not just another item on the agenda. It's not just another gathering point in Mississippi. But it is a place where thirsty people can come. I'm thirsty for the things of God. And that thirst will drive you. It will motivate you. It will get you up, get you out, and cause you to search out and say, I need something to satisfy the thirst that's in my soul. Amen. And so I'm at church because I'm thirsty. I did not come to just sit. I came to drink. I came to drink deep of the things of God. God has good things in store for us right now. Right now in this place. And, and I want to talk about that. Let's talk a little bit about rivers. Because rivers, they're powerful. Let me talk about the natural ones. I don't have to spend too much time telling folks here around rivers, you got one of the biggest right in your backyard. And that Mississippi River just moves its way down from north to south. The headwaters up by Lake Itasca, they come bubbling up out of the ground. And they make their way, bubbling, gurgling, chuckling, roaring, depends on where you're at really, and makes its way through locks and dams and it, it just works its way down until into the Gulf of Mexico it empties out and that's, that's the Mississippi River. Um, I'm fascinated by it. I'm, I'm fascinated by ecosystems. I'm fascinated by weird stuff like oxbows. Whatever those are. Rivers don't naturally run straight. Rivers, they wind. And that's a big deal. That's a big deal. There's a reason why that happens. I'm not preaching about that. It's just interesting to me. Um, but, but it's important to understand about that, that that's what rivers do. They start somewhere. They end up somewhere. And... Um, I'll say this at the outset, I guess. You don't want to drink the stuff that comes out at the end. Bad stuff. It's a bad idea to go take a big gulp, gulp cup and dip it down into the waters where they come through uh, the south end of Louisiana and take a nice big drink bad idea. But they say that if you are to go to the source to where it begins and do the same thing, you can actually get a very good drink of water. You can drink that stuff. That stuff is coming directly from the source. There hasn't been any additives. There hasn't been any pollutants. You're getting it just as it comes. And I'll say, it's worth saying right now, I want to make sure that I get my drink from the source. I'm not interested in drinking from the waters of denomination that have worked their way through a lot of stuff, that have worked their way through commentaries. You know, when that water works its way down from Minnesota and down along Illinois and into St. Louis and down Tennessee into Mississippi. It's picking up stuff. There's additives. There's things that are added to the waters that are not what were originally in the waters. And so pesticides and runoff and pollutions, I... Chemicals, hard chemicals, waste water, um, maybe even a little radioactivity. I imagine there's a dead body here and there. 
floating at one time or another in the river. And you can take a drink down from that and say, well, that's the water that we've been given. But for me, I just decided I'd rather just go on back to where this thing came from. And what I'm saying is I would rather get my experience from the original source than from stuff that's been fil filtered down through the generations. Amen. This, this experience that we have this morning is a, an original experience. You'll find it in Acts chapter 2 where it came bubbling up out of the day of Pentecost where rivers of living water came bursting into this world and, and people were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and they were filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost and they spoke with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them the utterance. And there were miracles and signs and wonders that accompanied them. And there was added to the church daily such as should be saved. What I'm saying is I want to drink from that. I, I, want, to, I want to put my cup down into that experience and say it is good. When you drink from that water, church works. When you drink from that water, you'll be healed. When you drink from that water, diseases are healed and devils are cast out and people form new lives under the power of the Holy Ghost. I don't want to go through years and centuries and even millennia of philosophy and, and denomination and rationalization and thinking and thoughts of men and women and perversions and distortions of the Word of God. I don't know what I'll find down at the end, but if I can go back to the beginning and say I'm going to get a cool drink of water, I'm going to get a pure drink of water, I'm going to let my family drink from that place and let my, my marriage be blessed by that place and let my children grow up with that kind of an influence. I want an original, authentic move and flow of the Holy Ghost. that's how the river works. Huh. I, I'm struck by, by rivers because they say that when you, when you get into a river, you're never, it, it's different than getting into a lake. Rivers, river water is different than lake water. It's different than pond water. Because when you get into lake water, you're getting in the same waters. If you have been in it one time, you are entering into the same stuff because it's corralled, it's held, it's in place. A pond, I love ponds. Ponds are great. Want to have a pond. You can catch big bass in ponds if you do it right. But, but it's the same stuff. It's not a river. Jesus didn't say it will be in you a pond of living water. And he didn't say it would be a lake of living water. He said it will be a river of living water. Amen. When you step into the river, you never step into the same water twice. And I'm going to tell you, if you'll get into the Holy Ghost, you're never going to find the same thing that you found the last time you were in there. But God has something new and it's flowing and it's moving and it's sloshing and it's, it's bubbling over. Hallelujah. I want something to move in this service this morning. I want something to stir me in the service. I want something to change me. So I got to get into the flow of what the Holy Ghost is doing. And I didn't come to just sit in the still waters. I came to move with God. I came to move with God. I came to flow. There's a flow here this morning. Amen. Now, I'm sorry. You came into a Pentecostal church. You came into an apostolic Pentecostal church. If you wanted a quiet church, now there's a couple churches down here and a couple churches over here, but you came into a Holy Ghost church and there's a moving and there's a flowing and the Spirit goes this way and then it goes that way and then it, it bubbles over. Ah, hallelujah. I like movement in the Holy Ghost. I like an outpouring of God's Spirit. It's liquid. It's, it's dynamic. It flows and it moves. And it carries you places. Huh. Amen. 
and, and rivers have purpose. Lakes don't have purpose. Lake, lakes are contained. They, I mean, they do have purpose, but they're not, they're not purpose-driven. What I mean by that is rivers are going somewhere. If you go to your major cities throughout the world, many times they're built on rivers. Before there were roads and before people could cut through wooded areas, the rivers were the easiest highways there were. And so you'll find St. Louis on a river. You'll find Memphis on a river. You'll, you'll, you'll find uh, Chicago on a river. There's, there's rivers that flow from there and that move through there. And, and men would get onto those rivers and they would make unimpeded progress and they would bring goods and they would bring commerce. And rivers, they say, are the lifeblood. <laughs> these, these are what rivers do. It's what they are. And, and it's worth mentioning. It's worth mentioning this morning that there's purpose. They go from a location out to a purpose greater. They empty out eventually into oceans. They go out into a bigger dynamic, into a more powerful dynamic, a, a much more universal, worldwide dynamic. I'm going to tell you, you may think that you're just flowing along into just this little streams and tributaries, but there's a bigger purpose at the end of this thing. Every river finds its way down into an ocean, into a place of emptying out. And, and, and I know there's creeks, and I know there's little tributaries, and, and, and we have our creeks and our tributaries. Every once in a while, we'll just segue, and we'll have a little church picnic. And, and we'll have choirs. And we'll have youth groups. Little branches of waters that spring off. We'll have Bible studies. And, and, and we'll, play, we'll play cornhole on the 4th of July. Amen. And, and it's fun, and it's fellowship, and it's great, but that's never the point. That's just little asides that happen. And if you're choosing a church because, well, you know, they got a good youth group, you're basing it on the tributary, not the final purpose. Well, they got a good choir. I think I'll go there. Now, that's, that's not our point. That's just an, an aside. But there's more to it than just that. Well, they got a nice building. I like it. And everybody there's like me. And I can make business contacts. Maybe I can find a wife. Social dynamics. And, and, and hey, praise God. I hope you find a wife if you love God and she loves God and husband. And God bless you. But those are creeks and tributaries. That's not the reason why the river's here. The reason is going to empty out into something greater and something more powerful and something dynamic. I'll just tell you right now. I'm bringing my kids here because they're going to a bigger purpose. I'm, I'm bringing my family here because we're getting involved in something that's worldwide. This water flows all over the place. And there's water that starts out here that it ends up over in South America and it ends up by Antarctica and it ends up in somewhere else because it's not just a local thing. It's not just a limited thing, but it's a worldwide thing that's bigger than you can imagine. Well, come on, kids. We need to go to Sunday school. We, we need to have a big time. It's more than just an experience. It's a lifetime. It's a, it's a life-changing, eternal dynamic. And the greatest thing you can do is get your family in this river. <laughs> Amen. It's a moving thing. Whew. Some people get scared when they come in our churches because our churches move. They flex. They flow. They, and, and you stick around long enough, this thing will flow over. Rivers don't always stay inside their banks. <laughs> You let enough rain fall, brother, and watch out. You let enough rain fall and enough extended application fall, and those rivers have a way of finding their way over the banks, and it'll get on other stuff, and it'll get over the borders. Oh, hallelujah. You, you pray long enough, and this thing has a way of bubbling over into other places. You, you worship God loud enough, and the Holy Ghost will fall in this place, and it'll move over into areas you didn't anticipate that it was going to go. David said it like this. He said, my cup runneth over. I, I want some things to bubble over in my life, and I want it to get on my 
I want it to get on my family and I want it to get on my coworker and I want to get it on my neighbor and my cousin and my brother. Why are you so happy? Because I got the Holy Ghost and some of it's getting on you and it's getting on you and it's touching my boss and it's touching my employees and it's touching my coworkers because if enough Holy Ghost flows, enough Holy Ghost flows, it'll get people shouting on Sunday morning. Oh, the waters are kind of low on Sunday morning because people are, people, <laughs> Man, how many? How far can I take this? Let's see. Well, yeah, people they usually run a little low on Sunday morning, but if enough water gets cranking, if enough if enough release is given, this thing will bubble up, and somebody will it'll 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 move over the boundaries of what's socially appropriate. <laughs> you'll see somebody take off running in the Holy Ghost, and you'll see. Wait, wait, we got borders, we got boundaries, we have programs, we have stuff we're doing. But this is a river, and it's not subject to the boundaries that... Well, you can't do that. You're going to scare somebody. You're going to intimidate. But this is a river, brother. This is a moving and a flowing and a... That's what you'll find in this river. Praise God. Amen. Whoo. And I'll tell you something else about rivers. And I'm, I haven't even got to what I'm supposed to preach about. I'm actually going somewhere with this. <laughs> the, the difference between a river and a swamp is an interesting dynamic. They both have land, they both have real estate, they both have dirt, they both have lots of water, but there's a difference. Well, what's the difference? Rivers have borders. Rivers have boundaries. Rivers have walls that hold them in check. Swamps don't. Swamps have no parameters. Swamps just... They just go wherever. They just kind of just kind of settle on everything. And, and because of that, there is no flow. Because of that, there is rot. Because it's not conducive to life. You know why it's called living water? It's not because it's spiritually alive in the natural sense. Living water was actually a term that the ancients used. It meant moving. It meant life was there. It meant fish could thrive there. But swamps aren't like that. Swamps are better for tadpoles. Swamps are better for frogs. Swamps are better for creeping things, crawling things, stinging things. Not many people buy swamp front real estate. <laughs> we, we looked for some real estate around here, and, and, and some of them we thought, hey, that's a good price. That's a lot of land. Let's go check that out. Because I want some acreage. And it says, wonderful acreage, waterfront property. A hundred acres for $20,000. Hey, look at there. The Lord's providing. And we drive down there, and it's a swamp. Step out, the mosquitoes pick you up and carry you off and eat you. Or drink you or whatever it is they do. And jump back in the car, barely hanging on to our life. Now we know why it's such a good deal. I'm just trying to tell you that, that there's a difference between a swamp and a river. And we're living in a world where things, borders are being removed and excavation is being done and walls are being taken down and borders are being changed and waters are flowing into places they were never supposed to flow into. And there's a lot of rot and there's a lot of stink and there's a lot of bad that's going on because I don't want to live in a swamp. I want to have a river. I want to be flowing somewhere. So there are some places I will not go and there are some things that I will not do and there are some choices. I'm not just going to hang out on the corner. I'm not just going to chill with just anybody. I'm not going to just 
go wherever the flow takes me. That's not a river. That's a swamp. And it can kill you and it can rot you and it can destroy your life. No, sir. I've got some borders. I've got some parameters. I've got some guidelines. It's called the Word of God. There actually is such a thing as men and there is such a thing as women. <laughs> There actually is such a thing as morality and, and, and absolute laws. And that's another message for another day. But I'm just telling you, you got to keep the borders if you want the river. Amen. You can be seated. So, so why this river? To understand this river, you have to understand that river. And so, naming names, a few, Farpar, and I don't know what the other one was, Flim Flam, I don't know. can't remember. Probably, <laughs> probably one of the, the most recognizable that I can identify is the Nile. That'll be familiar. Because those rivers, they, were, they weren't just, they were viewed as, as life. They were viewed as spirit. They prayed to the gods of the river. When, when, when God used Moses to bring the plagues to Egypt, he didn't just arbitrarily just start throwing curses out. He was cursing their gods. He was saying, you put your trust in those gods. I'm telling you, I'm the only one true living God. They had a God of the river. They had a God of the sun. The, the God of the river, his name's running from me right now. But the God of the sun was Ra. It was Amon Ra. And uh, Anubis. And, and Set. And Sekthi. And, and the different gods, that, and they, they all worked together. But at the top of it was the god of the river. They said the god of the river gave birth to all the other gods. And that was ancient people's way of saying that the river was the most important thing in their life. To the point they even worshipped it. And they said this. They said the god of the river is greater than the god of the sun. Because the god of the river gave birth to the god of the sun. And they said, Why? Because everybody knows that every morning the sun rises up out of the river. Everybody knows that. And so every morning the river gives birth to the sun. And so the God of the river is greater than the God of the sun, although we worship the God of the sun too. So when God, Jehovah, comes and tells them there's only one true living God and let my people go, the first thing he touched was the river. He was setting things in order. He was making a proclamation. When Pharaoh went to kill the baby boys, he didn't just, just start tossing babies into the river. He was offering a sacrifice to the river god. He was, he was doing population control because the Hebrews were growing numerous. But he was also giving a sacrifice so that the rains might come. He was... He was killing two birds with one stone. I'll get rid of the Hebrews and I'll have a sacrifice. And so every baby boy was thrown into there. And it is not an accident that later on when God's final judgment came, he took the firstborn son. God was saying, you took ours, I'll take yours. Because I'm the one true living God. And your gods are not able to deliver you. Your gods are not able to help you. I'm going to tell somebody this morning that, that the things of this world cannot help you. you got to find the right God who has the right power and who is able to reach you right where you are. God was making a distinction. These are the people of the God of heaven and earth. And you have to let them go. So that was... That was that river. I, I've made up a mind. I don't want to be in the flow of this world. There's a lot of people that are comfortable just throwing their children into this flow. But not me. I'm not going to just throw my kids into the flow of society. 
I'm not just going to let them just be a part of everything that just comes flowing down the pike. I'm, I'm, I'm going to teach them the ways of God. I'm going to show them the scriptures and say, even though we're by this river, uh, we're not a part of this river. It's a way of saying you can be in the world, but you're not of the world. And, and though I, I, I see the flow and I see the direction things are going, I'm not going that way with them. Amen. <laughs> and, and you, every day when you go to work, you're dealing with this flow. Every, 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 every day you're dealing with conversations and you're seeing current events and you're seeing the styles and the fads and you're hearing the music and that's all the water they drink of. That's all the river that comes through that land. Amen. And, 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 and if you drink of that water, if you, if you make that your life, then you'll become part of that. Moses was saying, yeah, we're here, but we're not of it. And, and, and so the way you live when you, you can't be in heaven yet, you can't live in the place God eventually has for you, so you got to be in that flow to some degree or another, but you can be in the flow and not of the flow. So when, when, when Johebed, it looks like Jochebed uh, in English, but the, in, the Hebrew pronunciation is Johebed. The Hebrews didn't have a J, they had a Y. And the pronunciation is Johebed. When she took that baby, she didn't just toss him in the river like everybody else, like Pharaoh did with everybody else. Amen. She, she put a covering around him and she built a little ark and she built a little covering and, and, and she put him in that water so that, yeah, he's got to be in there, but he doesn't have to be of it. And, and as long as I can keep the water out there, I'll just do the best I can while I'm in here. So even though I go in that, into that job, I'm praying that there's a covering around God's people. And even though I got to go to that school, I'm, I want to make sure that I'm in a little ark Hallelujah. There was an ark in the Old Testament that protected them from the water. And this was an individual ark that was saying, even though I'm working in this flow, I'm not going to be part of this flow. And I can drift along and I can make my way, but it's not going to touch me and it's not going to get on me and it's not going to drown me and I'm not going to become part of it. I'm going to be insulated from where, from what everybody else is doing because I can't just throw my babies into that flow. A lot of people, they just assume that Johebed made an ark, took the baby, and tossed him out there like a Frisbee. <laughs> Hope it works out, kid. You know, I'm not just taking my children and just hoping for the best. But the Bible says Miriam followed along. Miriam walked along that shoreline. And, and all the way up into Pharaoh's daughter's bathing chamber, Miriam was keeping an eye on that little boat. I, I just want to tell you, I thank God for people that help keep an eye on me. I'm grateful for a pastor that keeps an eye on people and, and friends that, that keep an eye on me and relatives that just, just as I'm floating along and bobbing along, they, see, there's, there's crocodiles in this river. There's, there's things that bite, things that devour, things that the, with the best of intentions, you're still vulnerable in the river. So Miriam is there. I thank God for a church that keeps its eye on people. Hey, hey, brother, I didn't see you at church last week. Everything all right? I, I, I see you're a little heavy in your spirit. Want you to know I'm praying for you. Want you to know that you came over my mind and prayer this morning. I'm not trying to make you feel like I'm in your business. I'm just telling you this is a river and I'm afraid for you and I don't want you to go down and I don't want you to sink and I don't want you to die and I don't want something gobbling you up in the middle of the week. I want to make sure you make it. I want to make sure you survive. I want to make sure you get there because it's tricky business navigating the river. That river. Man, I, I got a lot to say, and I'm just now about halfway through. I'm talking about that river. I'm talking about that place. This is when, when you're just trying to get through the flow of life. Hallelujah. 
Praise God. You can't always plan. It's, it overflows the banks. You know, they, they say that in those rivers in the Middle East, um, if you have an aerial view and you look down at them, that, that it's green all along the edges. And then it'll be brown past that. That's the power of the river. I, I'll just tell you this right now. When it comes to serving God, get as close to the river as you can. Amen. Get as close to the river as you can. Don't sit out on the edges. Don't stay far away. Well, I haven't been to church in about a month. Maybe I'll get there next month. Oh, come on, man. Get up on the banks of this thing and let this thing touch you and let this thing flow over you. Let it bubble Oh, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in this law does he meditate day and night. For he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, which bringeth forth fruit in his season. His leaf shall not wither, and what? Whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but they're like the chaff which the wind driveth away. I'm telling you, it pays to get close to the river. It pays to bring your children to the river. It pays to let these scriptures and these services flow over you and heal you and green you up. Amen. People are going to walk out of here green. You came in here dry. You came in here easily snapped. You came in here parched. You came in here just kind of leaning over like that. Oh, but let the water touch you. Just let some of these songs get a grip on you. Let some of these scriptures start dripping down onto your... Come on, man. Let this altar call just start to wash over you. You start absorbing that. You start pulling. And there's fruit that will start coming out on those branches. And there's this. It's all part of living by the river. We weren't designed for that river. I want to tell you something about Jordan. Jordan is, that's our river. That was Israel's river. It's not the Nile. It's not the Amazon. It's not the Mississippi. It's the Jordan. And, and there's things about the Jordan. I don't want to take too much longer, but I, I want to tell you about them. Because the Jordan's different than those rivers. <laughs> It's powerful. It blew my mind. I was sitting in my, sitting in my little reclining chair, got my laptop open and got my Greek and my Hebrew and I got all kind of stuff all over the screen and, and right there, I'm reading it, it just, boom, it jumped off the screen at me. This Jordan isn't like those rivers. First difference that comes to my mind is, is the headwaters. The headwaters of the Jordan are not like the headwaters of the Nile. The headwaters of the Nile come from the ground, but not Jordan. Jordan comes from the sky. Not Hermon. Not Hermon is where it begins. And, 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 and it's the only mountain in that range that pierces the condensation barrier. And when it gets up there, that mountain gets up above the dry stuff. It gets up above uh, the, 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 the dry areas and and it gets up into the vapor barrier. And when it gets up into there, rain falls all the time. Snow collects in the certain seasons and it holds the moisture and it just drip, 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 drips all day, every day. People fight. Syria fights. Palestine fights. Israel fights over Mount Hermon because it is the premier water source. And it's not coming from down here. It's coming from up there. I want to tell you, that makes a big, big difference. Because what we have this morning is not coming from down here. It's coming from up there. Have you ever heard about the wisdom that comes from above? 
It talks about the wisdom that comes from beneath and it's earthly and it's sensual and it's devilish. But the wisdom that is from above is first uh, gentle and peaceful and easy to be entreated. Hallelujah. There's something about coming from up there that's different than coming from down here. Philosophy comes from down here and rationalization comes from down here and doctrines of men that change with time come from down here and commentaries come from down here and denominations come from up up under the ground but not this. This happened on the day of Pentecost when suddenly there came a sound from yeah, you got it. From heaven. And, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. And it sat upon each of them. This thing didn't start down here, brother. This thing started up there. And it... It came from God. It came from heaven. It came from above. <laughs> praise God. Oh, praise God. And... And, and, and the Bible says this. It says how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell. How? Apart, distant from each other, never talking, never fellowshipping, never. Well, I don't need to go to church. I can stay home and get my blessing. No, no. We come together. We forsake not the assembling of ourselves together. There's something about coming together that's like the oil that comes down Aaron's beard and it drips down his garment. And the Bible says it's like the dew that is upon Mount Hermon. The dew, as long as it's by itself, is alone. A drop here, a drop there, a drop there. And I'm all for private prayer. And I'm all for getting a touch of God and a little rain falling privately in your prayer room. But there's something about when you walk into this building right here and that drop touches that drop and that drop touches that drop and your hallelujah connects with my thank you, Jesus. And my glory to God touches your praise, his holy name. And... and, and and it's a drop, and then it's a, a bigger drop, and then it's a trickle, and then it's a stream, and when it gets down to the bottom, it's a river. So, so go ahead and say hallelujah, and go ahead and say thank you, Jesus. That's why it says clap your hands. A couple of you people. No, all ye people. And shout unto God with the voice of triumph because I'm coming together and I'm creating a spiritual dynamic that will blow your mind. I'm about to get carried away in this river. I'm about to, I'm about to get submerged in this river. I want the Holy Ghost to wash over me. I want the power of God to carry me away. I... I want people to say, I got to get back to church on Sunday night because you never know what's going to happen in the river. You step into different waters each time. Whew, you feel that right there? You just... Wait a minute, this is going more, this is going beyond a homiletic. This is going beyond a little canned message. Something's touching me. Something's moving over me. I feel healing in these waters. I feel, man, it's a little weird, Brother Urshan. It's a little strange. I'm not really used to it, but ah, it feels good in the river. comes from a different place that's the first difference <laughs> but there's a second one y'all got time for the second difference this one's my favorite difference <laughs> because there's there's stuff in these waters there's different man I feel the Holy Ghost is just prickling what the, from down my head down my backbone them doodads are running up and down me right now the Holy Ghost <laughs> there's stuff in this river that's not in that river it's the kind of thing that when Joshua comes through it he says we're not just coming through it but we're going to leave a landmark. 
The Bible says the waters parted and they went through on dry ground and they followed the ark of the covenant. And when they followed that ark, the Bible says there were some places where the priests stopped and the priests, this is so, I love this phrase, the priests' feet stood firm. I'm going to tell you, coming out of Egypt, there's some places you got to plant your feet. And you got to say, this is how you come out. This is how you get over. You don't just come out any old way, but there's a way you come out. Joshua said, we're going to take a stone out of where the priest's feet stood firm. Because the day is going to come when your children are going to rise up. And they're going to say, Daddy, what meaneth these stones? And you're going to say, Baby, that's the way that God brought me out. That's the way that we came out of addiction. And we came out of drug addiction. And we came out of porn. And we came came out of dysfunction and we came out of sin and I want you to know baby so we're going to put some landmarks some ancient landmarks and we're going to take them from where the priest's feet stood firm so they took a rock and wherever those priest's feet stood firm they put that rock there so nobody would forget now I don't have time for this it's another message for another day but just for everybody that cares the Bible says he took 12 stones and he put them outside on the bank. Read it closely. It says he took another 12 stones and he put them in the river. That's 24 stones. Now, I don't have every idea of every mystery in the scripture, but I suspect. I suspect. When I see that 12 and 12 come together and I see that 24, in my mind, I flash to 4 and 20 elders up in heaven. I... I don't know if that's what it is. I just, I just, my mind flashes over to a priest with 12 stones on his chest representing the jewels. You know what that word jewel means? It means Jew L. It means child of God is what it means. <laughs> and he brought the children of God and the tribes. He'd bring them into the tabernacle. I don't want to go too deep with it. I'm just telling you there's 12 of them. There's 12 patriarchs. There's 12 apostles. It's 24. One's on the bank, and it's easy to see. One's in the water, and it's hidden, and it's revelatory. It's not, it's not revealed yet. I just see 12 patriarchs and 12 apostles, and they work together, and that's how we're going to get over. It's going to be one. It's going to be the Old Testament working with the New Testament, and we're going we're gonna to find salvation through that. I don't want to spend too much time on it. I'm just telling you there's stuff in this river that will blow your mind. Elisha said, yeah, Naaman, you got to come in this river because there's stuff in this river. I'm, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for men of God that planted their feet and said, I'm not moving from this spot right here. Matter of fact, I'm going to put a landmark right here. I'm thankful for men of God who said, we're going to preach repentance. We're going to plant our feet at repentance. And we're going to put a landmark of repentance down because that's how you come over. That's how you get over. It's going to be stone, a stone that's never to be moved. I'm glad for men that planted their feet in water baptism in Jesus' name and said there's none of the name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And I'm going to fight for the name of Jesus. And I'm going to preach the name of Jesus. And I'm going to sing about the name of Jesus. And I'm going to put a stone there. And I'm going to plant my feet there for the next generation to come. They planted their feet at the Holy Ghost, infilling, speaking in tongues. They planted their feet at holiness and separation from the world. They, they put some stones there and said, this is how you come out. Now, what in the world does that have to do with the river? I am so glad you asked. <laughs> I don't think it's an accident that when... John started baptizing. He started baptizing in Jordan. Because there's stuff in this river. <laughs> Jesus comes walking out. He says, baptize me. John says, no, you baptize me. Jesus says, suffer it to be so for now. I need to fulfill all righteousness. He was, and, and he was saying, I, I have to give a precedent. I have to give a blueprint that if I do it, you got to do it. 
and, and you got to go into that water. And when you go into that water, the Holy Ghost is going to come down upon you. You're going to be born of the water. You're going to be born of the Spirit. And that's how you're going to be called the Son of God. And you're going to get a witness from heaven that verifies that. It interests me. Is this all right? It interests me that John, as he preaches, he looks at the soldiers. He says, be content with your wages. He looks at the tax collectors. He says, he says don't defraud men. And, and he looks at, and preaches to the people. And, and finally, the Pharisees come walking up, and he says, you generation of vipers, who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? And, and he looks at them and and begins to preach about the kingdom of God. And he says, and think not to say within yourselves that we are children of Abraham. Because God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. People think he was just arbitrarily talking about stones. Uh-uh. He was talking about what Joshua planted all the way back then. <laughs> John wasn't just talking about rocks. He was prophesying. That God from these points of reference is going to raise up children unto Abraham. Why does that matter? Because you're part of that. You ever read where it says we are lively stones? Man, I'm a child of, I'm a Gentile, but I'm a child of Abraham. And God raised them up from where the priest's feet stood firm. Because there's stuff in these waters. There's scriptures like, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. There's scriptures like, Unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. A virgin shall conceive and bring forth a son. Thou shalt call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Stones that were placed that God would raise up children from. There's stuff in these waters. So Naaman, why can't I go to some other river? Why, why can't I go? Look, that's a muddy river. You ever been to Jordan? Jordan's muddy. Jordan's not one of them pretty rivers. I'll tell you, and I'm closing with this. <laughs> you can look at Pentecost and you could say, you want me to get in there? People walk into Pentecostal apostolic churches and they'll see somebody run around the church. And they'll go, you want me to get in there? <laughs> they'll see you, the preaching gets hot enough and the, the worship gets hot enough. Somebody will just, ah! <laughs> And dignified people say, you want me to get in there? You'll see a preacher up here doing cartwheels, turning red in the face, and, ah, Jesus! And dignified people go, <clears throat> I don't know if I can get in there. I have another river right down the street that's nice and clean. No muss, no fuss. Nobody cries. Nobody. When somebody gets moved with the Holy Ghost, folks, it's not a dignified thing. <laughs> I, I just want to let you in on a little something. You need to drop the dignified prayers. Because that's not the real you, and you know it. And more than that, God knows it. So don't bring dignified, professional, cookie cutter prayers. Oh, Lord. I thank thee, O oh God. That's what they do over in the crystal clear waters where nobody ever messes their hair up and everything's cut and dried and you can go home just like you came. But that's not the real you and that's not the real me. you got to come down into the muddy waters of this human experience. And you got to pray some prayers that actually mean something. God, I'm a hot mess. I've broken everything. I've messed up everything. I'm... 
and I need you to touch me. I need you to help me. My marriage is in trouble. My children are about to die. I'm sick in my body, and it's not going to be a pretty prayer. You got to come down into these waters, Naaman, because there's healing in these waters. There's salvation in these waters. This river. Somebody stand with me. Somebody lift your hands and call on his name. Somebody stir up the waters right now. Somebody come on down. This is the river that we know. This is the river that flows through Jerusalem. This is the river that comes down from the mountain and it heals and it heals and it touches and it delivers. Come on, let it, let it flow. Let it move. I, I know you can feel it. It's moved up and down these aisles. It's touched people. It's ministered to people. I want somebody to lift your hands to heaven. Open up your mouth. Jesus. Come on, Naaman. Come on, Naaman. Come on down. God will heal you of your condition. God will, God will take care of that sin that's been hanging on you, Naaman. Come and submerge yourself in these waters. What are you doing? I'm going down to the river. Why, why are you doing that? Because that's the head springs. That's, that's, that's how they did it in the book of Acts. I'm drinking from that river. I'm going back to the source of that river. They spoke in tongues back then. They worshiped God back then. They baptized in Jesus' name back then. This is how it happened at the river. All over this building, somebody lift up your voice. The Holy Ghost is here right now. I know you can feel it. I know you can feel it. I know you can feel it. That's the presence of God. Step out. Come, lift your hands. Lift your voice. Jesus, 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 Jesus. It'll flow around you. It'll, it'll flow around your marriage. And it'll, it'll flow around your body and get down into the roots of your children and It'll turn everything green that it touches. Hallelujah. Is your marriage dry? Come on down to the river. Let that water get back into your spirit. Let it get back into your prayer. Let it touch you. Hallelujah. Let God bring you back to life. Let God put the green back into your relationship, back into your family. Let the peace of God, the grace of God, the love of God. This river, right here, this river. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody lift your voice all over this building. Somebody call on his name. Help me, help me praise him. I love you, Jesus. Oh, I love you, Jesus. Have your way, have your way. Uh, somebody call on his name. Somebody call on his name. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 